So the VMAs uh, aired on MTV on Sunday night. I know what you're thinking. Wait, the VMAs are still a thing? And I know what else you're thinking. Wait, MTV is still a thing? I was just as surprised as you on both counts. I only know that this event occurred last night because I read through dozens of news articles every morning as part of my job. Uh, and in my scavenging, I stumbled across a few articles listing the winners of the um, 2021 VMAs. If you're curious, and you probably aren't, the winner for Video of the Year was Montero by Lil Nas X, uh, the one where he, he twerks on Satan. MTV giving its highest award to a video where a gay man dry humps Satan is probably the least surprising development of the year. Justin Bieber won Artist of the Year, his uh, 27th straight win in that category, I assume. The trophy for Best Collaboration went to Doja Cat featuring SZA, S-Z-A. I have no idea who those people are or even how many people they are. But apparently one of them came on stage dressed like uh, some kind of nightmarish sea cucumber. So that was interesting. But the most shocking thing, there, there, there she is. That is uh, that's Doja Cat. Is that Doja Cat or, or SZA? I don't know. Looks like maybe... Uh, Maybe one of those worms from the movie Tremors. But the most shocking thing about that outfit is that it covers more than 3% of her body. Many of the other celebrities, I'm assuming Doja Cat is a celebrity, decided to show up in see-through outfits, thongs, and so on and so on. Um, the performances on stage were in keeping with that theme. A woman named Clo Chloe writhed around on stage twerking, uh, slapping her butt in front of a giant blinking sign that said, Booty So Big. Now, that was downright subtle in comparison to somebody named Normani, who sang her hit song, Wild Side, I'm assuming it's a hit song, while rubbing herself against another woman who was strapped to a bondage board. Meanwhile, Lil Nas X strutted the red carpet, doing some cross-dressing, uh, some sort of pantsuit slash dress combination. And there was no shortage of, uh, of politics to punctuate the debauchery. Sidney Lauper, who evidently is still alive, took to the stage to present an award and then rant about abortion rights. And speaking of the elderly community, Madonna was also on the scene. She walked onto the stage wearing a giant coat and then dramatically uh, stripped the coat off to reveal the skimpy leather dominatrix outfit and thong underneath. I'm not going to show you the thong part. Uh, I'll, I'll have some mercy on you, but there's, there's the outfit. Now, this is when you know that it's time to put Nana in a home. You, you can make the argument that even allowing her to wander on stage looking like that is a form of, of elder abuse. She even looks kind of, you see there, in the, in, especially in the picture on the right, she looks kind of dazed and confused. She doesn't know where she is. She has that sort of uncertain facial expression that Joe Biden has made famous. We can only pray that Biden doesn't ever appear in front of cameras dressed in a similar way. But at this point, anything is possible. And now I've just pictured... Biden in that outfit in my head, and I want to cry. And yet, in a certain way, um, I'm glad that Madonna showed up and stripped off her clothes. Because there's something sort of profound and emblematic about it. Here she is, an old woman, having long since run out of things to say and ways to shock and offend, reduced to simply stripping on camera in her late 90s, begging for our attention. It's not offensive so much as sad and pitiful, dull. You don't want to yell at her about it. You want to give her a coat and a bowl of soup and pat her on the head and say, it's okay, you don't have to do this anymore. Grandma, sit down, you'll be all right. Let's, put, let's, let's just watch some TV. Murder, she wrote, is on, I think. Now, Madonna, in that way, is a good representative of the whole event and of the broader pop culture that she helped to create. There was, last night, plenty of debauchery and perversion and nudity and all kinds of desperate sexual attention-seeking, and none of it managed to make any waves at all. The VMA's ratings have been collapsing for years. Nobody cares. You only know about any of this because I'm telling you, and I only, I only know about it because I read a couple of articles just so that I can make the point that I'm making right now. Madonna was relevant back during a time when Pop artists could simply wear revealing outfits and sing about sex, and um, that was enough to create controversy and uh, drive publicity. You know, she could roll around on stage in a wedding outfit singing about losing her virginity, and that was a big moment. That was revolutionary. Wow. 
But now pop stars can hump each other in bondage gear while singing graphically about their genitals, and it goes unnoticed. They have to go to greater and greater extremes to generate the sort of hype that Madonna could once attract with a fraction of the effort. Now, Lil Nas X, speaking of him, got some of the attention that he hopelessly yearns for when he made that twerking Satan video. But that controversy died down pretty quickly and everybody moved on. And that's why he has to dream up new degeneracies every week just to stay within the vicinity of the limelight. Last week, he was uh, posing for pictures while wearing a fake pregnancy baby bump. And, uh, and that was supposed to be a thing. But even that's pretty boring and standard these days, especially in a culture where millions of people actually believe that men can literally get pregnant. There was a time when it was considered revolutionary and rebellious to be a vile, vulgar pervert. The, the perverts were rebelling against a culture that rightly disapproved of that behavior. They were seeking to tear down moral standards and structures that they claimed were oppressive and restricting, and they succeeded. The perverts won. But the thing about staging a revolution and winning is that now you are the man, you're the system, you're the very institution of power that you once sought to destroy. So you stage the revolution and you win, now you have to take over and run these things that you were just five seconds ago trying to tear down. So now the vulgar perverts aren't rebelling against anything at all. Madonna is old enough to be the grandmother of most of the rest of the people she shared the stage with. That means that as they were bumping and grinding and showing their asses and shouting, look at me, look at me, they were behaving exactly as a woman their grandmother's age once behaved and still does. There's nothing revolutionary or shocking about it. It's mainstream. It's acceptable. It's boring. It's empty. It's feeble. It's pathetic. Of course, this kind of stuff has always been empty, feeble, and pathetic. It was empty, feeble, and pathetic back when Madonna was doing it 30 years ago, and everybody thought it was revolutionary. But decades ago, people made the mistake of thinking that artists, quote-unquote, who showed their butts and sang about sex, were doing something brilliant and, and significant simply because it was rebellious. Now that it's no longer rebellious, the shine has worn off, and it's easy to look at it and think, wow, these people really just have nothing at all to say. I'm bored. What else is on? This is perhaps the most underrated aspect of living in a morally decayed culture. Because if you didn't know any better, and you weren't living in such a culture, and you thought about it, you might think, well, that that could be fun at least. That's not. It's quite boring. I mean, it's many other things as well, but it's certainly boring. As it turns out, evil has a rather bland flavor. Now, the good news is that Amid all of this dull, hollow decadence, virtue becomes exciting and rebellious. I mean, pop stars can spread their legs and take off their clothes and scream about their right to kill babies. And none of that is remotely revolutionary or brave. But if one of them had appeared on stage to speak in defense of the unborn, or to promote chastity and modesty, or even to defend something like patriotism, that would have been truly shocking and required real courage. It would have been a revolutionary act. None of them have the spine for that or the value system, so it didn't happen. Yet the fact remains that the moral code these people fight against is the moral code of today's true cultural revolutionaries. We are now the guerrilla warriors fighting against powerful institutions who despise us and seek to destroy and oppress us. It's not a good situation to be in. I would not prefer it if I was given the choice. But it does provide an opportunity to connect with people, especially young people, who naturally desire to rebel against systems of power. So we can say to them, join us. That's our side. The rebels. We're the rebels. Or you can join the naked grandma on stage to defend the boring status quo. Well, I hope you enjoyed that clip from the Matt Wall Show. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down there so you can stay up to date on all of our future content.